Welcome to Module 8. This module provides an overview of the different methods that are available for the reduction of energy efficiency design, or INDEX, EEDI. The module also evaluates the effectiveness of the different energy efficient technologies that are available in the market and currently applied. The module also explores the outcomes for future ships because of the application of EEDI. That is, ship technology will need to become more complex and ship building costs will increase. However, the ship total lifestyle cost and environmental impacts will be reduced. Upon completion of this module, you will be able to do the following. Identify the main methods for the reduction of energy efficiency design index for different vessels. Discuss the different ship hydrodynamics and its role. Describe the economic implications of EEDI. Overview. A number of topics are covered in this module. They include energy efficiency design index reduction methods, ship hydrodynamics, propeller and propulsion system, engines and power systems, auxiliary machinery, economic assessment, and we end with a case study of futuristic concept ships. Regulation 21 specifies the method for calculating the required EEDI and all relevant details. The required EEDI is the regulatory limit for EEDI, and its calculation involves the use of reference lines and reduction factors. For reference, please note that Regulation 20 deals with the attained EEDI and specifies the need for its calculation and verification. Attained EEDI is the actual EEDI of a ship that is calculated using EEDI formulae. Implementation, the EEDI will be implemented in phases. Phase one was from year 2015 to 2019. Phase two will run from year 2020 to 2024. And phase three is from 2025 onwards. One of the most effective ways of reducing a ship's EEDI is to choose a smaller main engine or main propulsion motor for the ship, thereby reducing the ship's design speed. In this slide are some of the ways to reduce EEDI, but it has to be ensured that any change does not lead to unsafe and underpowered ships that may lose maneuvering capability during adverse weather conditions. The following energy efficiency measures can further reduce EEDI. For the optimization of ship hydrodynamics, the following can be helpful. An optimized hull form design, a high efficiency propeller, rudder and appendices. For the main and auxiliary engines, optimization can be improved for specific fuel consumption. The engine can also be derated and a waste here recovery system can be added. The hull of a ship is the most notable structural entity of the ship. Definition of the hull is as follows. It is the watertight enclosure of the ship which protects the cargo, machinery, and accommodation spaces of the ship from the weather, flooding, and structural damage. The hull form is a compromise that results from the need to satisfy a set of different types of requirements. Capacity or volume, the spatial distribution of the volume, displacement, stability, intact, hydrodynamics, service speed, loaded ballast, Sea keeping, maneuverability, functionality, aesthetics. In addition, there are a number of other form coefficients like prismatic coefficient, volumetric coefficient, and so forth. 
These are basically the parameters used to define the volumetric distribution of the ship's hull along its length. A ship's resistances and its trim are closely related to each other. This is due to the fact that trim can change parameters that impact on the hydrodynamic performance of a ship. The high impact of trim on ship performance is well known, in particular for container ships and Roro vessels. Large fuel savings are claimed due to changes to the ship trim. The possible explanation for the relatively large dependence of ship performance on the trim are because Resistances are generally proportional to ship speed, V2. Propulsion power needed is proportional to V3. Fuel consumption per nautical mile is proportional to V2. Generally, during ship design and choice of machinery, the engine and ship hull form and main dimensions are optimized for operating conditions. Hull design optimization can lead to significant reduction in fuel consumption. Areas for improvement include the hull itself, reduce skin friction, after body, reduce wave making resistance, bulbous bow, reduce wave making resistance, flow optimization around the hull appendices and openings. A properly designed bulbous bow reduces wave resistance by producing its own wave system that is out of phase with the bow wave from the hull. This creates a cancelling effect, an overall reduction in wave making resistance. A bulbous bow works best at a certain speed range and is sensitive to ship draft as well. If a ship sails at a different speed and draft ranges than the one that the bulbous bar is designed for, the bulbous bar has no effect or, in the worst cases, even a negative effect. The air lubrication system is a method to reduce the resistance between the ship's hull and the seawater using air bubbles. The air bubble distribution across the hull surface reduces the resistance working on the ship's hull, creating energy saving effects. With the right ship hull design, the air lubrication system is expected to achieve up to 10 to 15% reduction of CO2 emissions, along with significant savings of fuel. One effective way of improving the energy efficiency of a ship is to upgrade shipboard technologies to more energy efficient ones. The upgrading of technologies is not a shipboard activity, but nevertheless, the shipboard staff can always engage in proposing such technologies. This slide shows the propeller energy balance, and most of the technologies aim to recover part of the 40% losses. There are devices that can be placed at the aft of the propeller to recover some of the lost energy, and thus increase the overall efficiency of the propeller. These devices are normally cost effective as a retrofit option with a short payback period, provided they can be fitted correctly. A number of devices fall into this category. Some of them involve modifications to the rudder. The most important among these devices are described next. The wake equalizing duct consists of one half ring duct with foil type sections attached on each side of the after body forward of the propeller. The half ring duct accelerates the flow into the propeller in the upper quadrant on each side and retards the flow in the lower quadrant. This results in a more homogeneous wake field in front of the propeller, while the average wake is almost unaltered. The improved power consumption that is obtained from well-designed wake equalizing ducts can be attributed to the following factors. A, improved efficiency because of more axial flow and a more homogeneous wake field. Reduced resistance because of reduced flow separation in the after body. Orientation of duct axis so the inflow to the propeller is given a small pre-rotation. Improved steering due to straightforward flow of the rudder and more lateral area aft. Similar to Mew's duck, it is placed to the fore of the propeller with the aim of accelerating water inflows. 
This device is ideally suited to vessels with full hull forms, such as tankers and containers, operating at lower speed. The newest duct and other similar devices are designed for installation forward of the propeller as appendages. They've been adapted successfully for larger scale commercial vessels. It is claimed that the newest stuff produces energy saving through three major impacts. One, wake field equalization. The installed duct straightens and accelerates the hull's wake into the propeller and also produces a net forward thrust. Two, the reduction of propeller hub vortex. An improved flow behind the duct significantly reduces the propeller hub vortex with corresponding thrust deduction, which leads to improved thrust and better inflow to the rudder. Three, contra-rotating swirl. Due to individually placed fins, a pre-swirl in counter direction can be generated, and this reduces the rotational flow loss of the propeller. The way that the Muse duct system improves propeller efficiency is through a more streamlined and directed flow into the propeller and thus reducing propeller losses. The level of energy saving is claimed to be up to 8%. However, this will depend on the certain ship designs and types. The potential saving for each vessel will depend on a number of factors. Therefore, any decision should be made on a ship specific basis after performing a good deal of ship hydrodynamic analysis and model tests. Devices forward of the propeller, the pre-swirl stator. These stators are located at the four propellers as shown in the figure, and they act like guide vanes for the flow into the propeller. The aim of guide vanes is to eliminate, or at least to reduce, the cross flow that is often observed in front of the propeller. These vanes are fitted in front of the propeller on both sides of the stern post. The vanes straighten the flow and boundary layer in front of the propeller and thereby improve the efficiency. Cross flow appears mostly in ships with stern bulbs and full hull forms that operate at relatively low speed. The benefit is therefore largest for tankers and bulk carriers. The improvement decreases with decreasing fullness of the hull form. The propeller operation involves flow losses that appear at the rear of the propeller in the form of axial flows and rotational flows. These flow losses appear mostly in the slipstream at the back of the propeller. There are devices that can be placed at the aft of the propeller to recover some of the lost energy and thereby increase the overall efficiency of the propeller. These devices are normally cost effective as a retrofit option with a short payback period, provided that they can be fitted correctly. A number of devices belong to this category and some of them involve modifications to the rudder. Main engines of almost all existing vessels are both designed and optimized for one specific vessel speed and engine load. The introduction of slow steaming in many ship segments has drastically lowered the actual transit speed from design levels, and thereby leaving the vessel and its engines operating at load levels that are not optimal. Derating the engine offers the possibility of lowering the vessel's maximum speed, specified maximum continuous rating, and thereby optimizing actual load point with design load point. This results in higher efficiency with reduced specific fuel consumption at the new optimum design point. Waste heat recovery can be carried out to produce hot water, steam or electricity from hot exhaust gases or hot water from the engine's cooling system. Main areas for waste heat recovery are from the exhaust of engines where the temperature is high. Also, low grade heat recovery can be done from the engine's cooling system and needs to be considered for specific ship applications. For ships in operation, the scope for extra heat recovery needs to be reviewed 
And generally, if low grade heat is needed on board, then a waste heat recovery system can be used. This slide shows one example of a waste heat recovery system and hybrid propulsion. Renewable options can be used in ships of all sizes to provide primary, hybrid and or auxiliary propulsion, as well as for onboard and shoreside energy. These clean energy solutions are being integrated through retrofits to existing fleets or incorporated into new shipbuilding and design, with most applications deploying renewable energy as part of an integrated package of efficiency measures. Solar PV applications use electricity that is generated by photovoltaic or PV cells. All advances in this fast evolving technology are available for maritime transport use. The primary limitations are the lack of sufficient deployment area for the PV panels and the energy storage that is required. Recent advances in energy storage technology offer better potential and prospects for solo PV powered propulsion systems for ships in the short term. However, full ship propulsion using solar PV will require further technical development and is likely to be confined to relatively small ships. Renewable options can be used in ships of all sizes to provide primary, hybrid and or auxiliary propulsion, as well as for onboard and shoreside energy use. These clean energy solutions are integrated through retrofits to the existing fleet or incorporated into new shipbuilding design with most applications deploying renewable energy as part of an integrated package of efficiency measures. There are two basic ways to introduce renewable energy solutions for shipping. One, as retrofits for the existing fleet, or two, through incorporating them into new construction designs. Many new design concepts for ships of all scales include renewable energy options for auxiliary and ancillary energy use, while a smaller number are targeting 100% renewable energy or zero emissions technologies for primary propulsion. Most applications envisage renewable energy as part of an integrated package of efficiency measures. Renewable energy also has potential application in shoreside infrastructure, primarily for alternative electricity generation. There are also other technologies that can be used for upgrade and retrofit. These include energy saving lamps, card controlled or occupancy sensors lighting system for accommodation, variable speed drive for pumps, fans and compressors, HVA system control upgrade, and also pre-cooling of incoming air using outgoing cold air. The ship of the future may well be equipped with state-of-the-art technologies. It may include optimized hull and propellers that are built with lightweight material. It may include extensive use of solar and wind power and change from diesel to fuel cell. The hybrid electrical propulsion will have a battery energy storage system or it will be a full hybrid system. In the near future, we will also see LNG as fuel. In summary, the NYK Super Eco Ship of 2030 could reduce 69% of CO2 emission if all of the technology can be harmonized and used together efficiently. Summary and conclusions for this module. The main methodologies for EEDI reduction were covered. Selected energy efficient technologies were reviewed and discussed. Future ships because of EEDI will have the following. Better naval architecture characteristics. Optimum hull and propeller designs. More energy efficient engines. A move to low carbon fuels such as LNG. Reduced design speeds in particular container ships more electrification and hybrid systems. As a result of the above, ship technologies would definitely become more complex 
and shipbuilding costs will increase. However, on the positive side, the ship's total life cycle costs and the environmental impacts will be reduced. Thank you. This slide completes the current module.